There we go. All good. All good. Perfect. Thank you so much. So good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining. My name is Catherine Connolly, and I'm the Community Relations and Engagement Coordinator with Seniors NL. Welcome to this week's Let's Talk About session. Today, we'll be talking about falls safety. I'm going to introduce our guest speaker in a moment. Sign language interpretation for our Let's Talk About sessions are supported by the Disability Policy Office, Department of Seniors, Youth, and Social Development, to whom we are very grateful. Before I introduce today's presenter, I'd like to cover a few housekeeping tips. <clears throat> Please mute your mic to block out any outside noise. Click the closed captioning button on the bottom of your screen. Put your questions in your, and questions and comments in the chat. However, we will be opening up the mics afterwards for questions and uh, questions and answers directly. The session is being recorded. And if you do have any requests for presentations, please, by all means, don't hesitate to reach out. Barb, can you please go ahead and read the land acknowledgement? Okay. Good morning. <laughs> Excuse me. We respectfully acknowledge the land on which we gather as the ancestral homelands of the Beothic, whose cultures have now been erased forever. We also acknowledge the island of Bukta Umbuk as the unceded traditional territory of the Beothic and the Mi'kmaq. And we acknowledge Labrador as the traditional ancestral homelands of the Innu of Nitasinen and the Inuit of Nunatsi Avut and the Inuit of Nunatu Avut. We recognize all First Peoples who were here before us those who live with us now and the seven generations to come. As First Peoples have done since time immemorial, we strive to be responsible stewards of the land and to respect the cultures, ceremonies, and traditions of all who call it home. As we open our hearts and minds to the past, we commit ourselves to working in a spirit of truth and reconciliation to make a better future for all. Thank you so much, Barb. Welcome. I'd like to introduce our guest speaker. Ellen McVicker is a lifelong representative for Newfoundland and Labrador and Nova Scotia. Ellen was born and raised in Glace Bay, located on the eastern tip of Cape Breton, Nova Scotia. He holds degrees from both Acadia University and Dalhousie. Most of his professional experience stems from the pharmaceutical industry, covering varying parts of Atlantic Canada. He has been with Lifeline since April of 2023, and he currently lives just outside Halifax and Bedford, Nova Scotia, with his wife and one-year-old Kason Brogan. Alan, I pass it over to you. Thanks, Catherine. Fall safety, benefits of uh, Lifeline. Uh, Catherine, you want to go to the next slide, please? Thank you. Um, so first off, uh, your safety is important. One in three seniors will fall every year. 50% of the falls happen at home. And as we get older, certain chronic conditions, uh, diabetes, heart, con heart disease, uh, uh, Parkinson's, uh, can make you more prone to fall. Um, and as a theme going out through throughout the presentation, we'll, we'll talk about ways to um, reduce the risk of falls, but uh, falls, they're going to happen. Uh, as you see, one in three fall, one in three seniors fall every year. But what we need to do is, uh, is, is really try and um, uh, get you off the floor as quick as possible. Um, you have to reduce your, your, your long, lie, we call them long lie times, the, the amount of time you're on the floor. Because the, the, the longer you lie on the floor, um, you get into more serious complications and, and unfortunately increased uh, uh, mortality rates. Um, so time is, is, is critical. Um, Catherine, next one. So common causes of falling and ways to uh, overcome them. We're going to go through, uh, I believe, six causes. Uh, balance. Uh, as we get older, our, our gait kind of changes the way we walk. Uh, our balance and coordination uh, aren't, aren't what they used to be. Our, our, our muscle mass uh, 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 decreases. Um, and uh, as well, uh, uh, you might have joint stiffness. 
Uh, what we can do to, to kind of improve our balance as we age is, is to exercise regularly. Um, for example, there are exercises you can do, very low impact exercises. We have patient educational material. I, I believe Seniors NL um, has access to them in our, our Preventing Falls uh, uh, booklet. Um, very low impact stuff. You can do them from a chair, Tai Chi from a chair, yoga from a chair, stuff to just, you know, you don't have to be in, in top top physical form, ready to do triathlons or anything, you can do them from a chair. Uh, and then they'll just increase your core strength a bit uh, and improve your balance. Uh, and also talk to your, to your professional. Uh, next thing is, is mobility. You should use assistive devices. Obviously, uh, if, if you have a cane, use your cane. Uh, walker, use your walker. And uh, another one is, is just you know common sense. Wear the right shoes according to weather. It's winter. Um, in, uh, in, in Halifax the other day, we had some, uh, so dusting of snow overnight, uh, on Sunday and Monday morning, I, I went to take, uh, Brogan out for a walk and, uh, yeah, I wasn't wearing the, the right shoes. I was wearing my sneakers cause they're easy to just flip on and off. And I figured it's not a lot of snow, but it was, you know, a few centimeters, but it was enough to make things slippery. And, uh, I did a little dance and what I didn't go head over tea kettle, ass over tea kettle, sorry, pardon my language, but, uh. Uh, I did do a little dance and uh, Brogan kind of looked at me like, dad, you okay? And I'm like, yeah, okay. But uh, yeah, make sure you you wear the right shoes, uh, especially uh, according to weather. Uh, next one, Catherine. Other causes, medications. Uh, there are side effects of certain medications. If you've got a, uh, a complicated uh, drug regime, some of these drugs, uh, interact with one another and might cause uh, hypertension, hyper, hypertension as well as hypertension. Um, uh, so it, it's important to review your, your medications regularly, uh, talk to your doctor or your pharmacist, and uh, you know, always, always take as directed uh, by your healthcare provider, your physician or your pharmacist. And health conditions. As we spoke about before, I could have uh, diabetes. I know I, I sold uh, um, an antibiotic, uh, IV antibiotic for uh, diabetes uh, oh, about 10 years ago. Um, and so I, I, I got to know a bit about the disease state. And one of the, one of the, pro, one of the uh, indications for our IV antibiotic uh, was for uh, diabetic foot infections. Uh, you start to lose, with, you know, diabetes. You sometimes uh, uh, lose circulation in your in your extremities, and that can uh, lead to ulcers in your feet. And and obviously, uh, if your circulation in your your lower extremities uh, isn't isn't as good as it should be, um, that obviously can lead to some some high risk of falls. Um, as well as uh, inner ear problems, uh, vertigo, dizziness. Um, so if you do have any kind of dizziness uh, important uh, due to your health conditions, uh, sit down or stay seated until your head clears and then stand up very slowly um, to avoid uh, any unsteadiness. Next one, Catherine. Uh, sensory deficits. Uh, you could, you could uh, have issues from, um, um, you know, your hearing, uh, your sight. Uh, I know as, as, as we get older, you're, you're at uh, higher risk of uh, getting, getting cataracts. Uh, so if your vision or hearing is impaired, you're starting to feel that they're, they're getting impaired. Um, have your hearing and eyesight tested regularly. Um, and tell your doctor if you've had a fall or you're having dizziness or, or balance problems. And the next one, Catherine, I believe is hazards. Uh, just remove obvious hazards in your home. I know it's, it's, this is, is pretty common sense uh, stuff, but uh, you know, in the winter we might have a few extra mats around uh, yeah, to wipe our feet. This is, it's important to, to wipe your feet and not, uh, you know, not, not leave a wet floor, which is obviously another hazard. Um, but these are some things you have to be conscious of if you have one of those fall, small footstools that are more decorative than, uh, than, than functional, uh, you might want to get them out of the way. Um, and uh, you can add safety modifications, uh, specifically uh, one area that comes to mind is grab bars in, in, in your bathroom. 
for example, my uh, my father, uh, he's long since passed, but uh, one time I was uh, on, a, on a business trip at home in Cape Breton and uh, uh, my mother called downstairs where I was staying and uh, dad uh, was in his mid 80s at, mid 80s at this point and he couldn't get out of the tub by himself. Um, and so I got him out and called my brother the next day and, and said, look, I couldn't get him out of the tub last night. My next business trip, uh, my next visit, um, there were grab bars in, in the bathtub area and, and, and whatnot. So you can add, there are certain modifications uh, you can add to the bedroom, bathroom, uh, and kitchen. Uh, often you're, just from my, my recent experience, home health, there's sometimes a home health section uh, in your pharmacies. And the, the professionals there are great uh, resources to kind of chat with and, uh, and and get their view on things. Next one, Catherine. So the question we have to ask ourselves, what could happen if I fall? Uh, you can't get up. You're alone. Uh, no one's there to help you get up. Can't call out to help. There's nobody hear you. Can't you reach your phone. You, know, you have a cell phone. It might be charging in another room somewhere. Uh, pull cord too short. That's that's if you're in a, a senior facility that uh, has some some type of system and you, you can't reach it, or in, in fact you may be unconscious. You might not be even even awake to to call out uh, if you could. Thank you, Catherine. So Lifeline can meet your needs. Uh, as as we discussed, uh, you can't prevent all falls. Falls are going to happen. But it's really important we get you off the floor as quickly as possible, um, so we can uh, we can prevent uh, further complications. Catherine, what will that do? Well, that'll, that'll let you feel confident, uh, knowing knowing you can always uh, get help and 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 kind of overcome that uh, that fear of of, of falling and uh, living alone in your own. Uh, home because you should be able to, to maintain your independence and, and, and live confidently uh, as long as possible without without fear of falling. Again, maintain your independence uh, and as well for your for your family members. Uh, uh, I know again again reaching back to my own personal story. Uh, my my mother had uh, uh, severe dementia. And uh, in her, her last years of her, her life, uh, we couldn't get in, into her, a facility because there was no room, uh, Cape Breton. Um, and uh, they had a personal care worker uh, from Newfoundland, by the way, um, with her for the past two, last couple of, maybe, no, I'd say two, I would say the last year of her life. Um, but then my mother passed on and uh, um, dad, as I stated before, was in his mid eighties and was never, uh, was never stable on his feet. Um, and, and we asked that, you know, you want to keep the personal care worker on, on with you because, you know, you maybe could use some help. And being a good Presbyterian, uh, he was not going to live uh, uh, with a female personal care worker in, in, his, in his last year. So we said, okay, we're, we're, getting, you a, you know, we're getting you a lifeline. Um, so uh, that's, uh, it, it does give you incredible peace of mind. I know my, in, in my, my, the last few months of my dad's life, uh, uh, my sister did get some some calls um, from Lifeline, and she was dad needed help, and she was glad uh, that uh, she was able to be there for him and get him some help. Uh, next one, Catherine. So ask yourself: uh, after a fall, if I was injured and cannot get up, how would I get help? And it's it's I know this sounds common sense, but it's really as simple as that. Yeah, how would you get help? Gather. So Lifeline's here for you. As I said before, not all prevent falls are preventable, but time waiting on the floor can be reduced. And that's, as I said, it's critical. Critical. Help is available when needed. Again, it'll help you maintain your independence and live at home safely. Easy to sign up. You can easier to use, just press the button. Um, there's a 1-800 number specifically for seniors NL, uh, a lifeline. So it's very easy to sign up. <clears throat> and we will work with you to meet your needs. Uh, our direct sales people are, are, are wonderful. They'll, they'll, they'll chat with you and find out what your lifestyle is like, 
um, what, what your financial situation is, and, and they will work with you um, to try to find something that'll fit your needs. Gold standard of personal emergency response system with 50 years of experience. We just had our, this is our 50th year and and uh, providing lifelines for people. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, we just had our golden anniversary started in 1974. Um, I still remember that commercial help I fall on, I can't get up. It's it's kind of engraved, in, it's, it's kind of engraved in my, my memory, but I think a lot of people remember that commercial, um, but that was that was decades ago. Lifeline at home or on the go. So what, what kind of system would you need? Uh, at home, uh, it's more for people that are, you know, I mean, I have a history of falling or, or a risk, you get a risk of falling or have a fear of falling, but you're, you're mainly staying um, at home. You're not, you're not moving around uh, outside as much or lifeline on the go, uh, which is, uh, you're still very active. You're, 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 you're kind of socially uh, uh, still active and you might need to, uh, you might need, you might, need some help even outside the, your home um, and you have a question as to you know what would happen if I fall uh, outside my home am I going to be able to get up uh, Catherine there should be another so fall detection uh, this is just an added layer of, of protection uh, where the you don't even have to press the button it'll it, it'll detect a fall um, even if you're if you're unconscious or unable to, to, to press the button, uh, it has sensors uh, that measure velocity velocity and, and orientation, so it can tell when you're uh, when you're falling. So uh, uh, very important if you have a, a real fear of falling and, and you're worried about you know being being maybe knocked unconscious or I know just talking this speaking with some occupational therapists. Um, some uh, some patients have a real issue with with uh, their fingers and their hands, um, and and they usually go for that option. And again, life like lifeline uh, on the go uh, access to help while at home and away. Outside the home, it uses several dis different uh, systems to uh, find you, like um, GPS, cellular. Um, internet Wi-Fi hotspots, intelligent breadcrumbs, techie stuff that I certainly do not uh, pretend to understand, but they can find you outside your home. Are these available everywhere? Uh, you should, uh, the system, you if you do with, go with Lifeline on the go, you should, uh, it should be an area with, with good cellular service in order for it to, to work properly. Med ready medication dispenser. This is just another uh, product we offer. Um, it's you know it's more for uh, if you have a, a very complicated um, uh, medication regimen or if you've forgotten doses. Maybe you've forgotten. Maybe you've been hospitalized because you've forgotten uh, doses. Um, it, it basically sounds the alarm whenever you uh, whenever it's time to take another uh, dose of medication. Uh, it's got twenty eight um, compartments. So, for example, it'll if you have one one dose a day, it'll it'll last for twenty eight days. Four days, four doses a day, it'll last for seven days, and it has to be uh, re reloaded. So it'll it'll beep for. It's very annoying. It uh, will beep for five seconds, stop for a second, and beep again for five seconds, and it will do that for thirty minutes um, unless you unless you come in and open the the door for the you know, the compartment. Uh, one thing I'd just like to, to add in here, sometimes we, we sometimes forget that some medications can actually cause us to fall. And that was one of the six factors that do that can cause fall. So I just wanted to, to just elaborate onto that one a little bit, that it's so important, again, to make sure that you have your medications reviewed frequently with your physician, with your pharmacist. Um, there's uh, an organization here in St. John's and I'm sorry for uh, the, the medication therapy, I believe the name of it is. They'll actually run over and go over the list of medications that you have, just to make sure that there's something there that may not be conflicting with another medication, or it could be something that could be removed. Um, one of the key things to do too, and again, I'm just going right back onto the medications. 
when your medications say drink lots of water, there's a reason why it's saying drink lots of water. It's so that medication can flux through your system properly. If not, you have leftover byproducts, medication byproducts left in your system, and other medications can actually interfere with that, and it can cause other complications, um, and it can increase your risk of falling. So I just want to stress how important it is to take medications properly uh, and drink lots of water with them. So why Lifeline? Uh, on average, uh, our calls are answered within 30 seconds. Um, 96% of, of Lifeline uh, subscribers think Lifeline could save their life. And we offer help in, in over 240 languages. Been doing this a long time. Uh, because we've been doing this a long, a very long time, we, uh, we have a, a, just a ton of uh, educational uh, resources. Uh, you can find these at uh, Seniors NL or your occupation, a lot of times at your doctor's office. Uh, how to avoid a fall, stay fit, take medications. Just, just, a, just That's just a sampling of, of some of the resources we have available. Um, again, because we are the gold standard of, of um, senior patient uh, safety and, and reducing falls. Information on these brochures can also be located on the website to download the PDF version if anybody is savvy um, and they want to actually check those out. And saying that if there's anything that you need, you know, you could always reach out to myself and seniors now. Oh, wait. Uh, when I send out the recording, the recorded the link to the recorded video, I'm also going to attach the PDF version of how to get up from a fall. I know that was one of the questions that was asked during registration if we're going to demonstrate how to get up from a fall. It's it's a little bit difficult to do that through a Zoom meeting. However, I will make sure that you do have the documentation to show you how to for most individuals. Uh, this doesn't work for everybody, of course, because if you do happen to have, say, um, a hip replacement, you have joint issues, uh, if you have uh, problems with your knees, this may not work for you. And I would highly advise that you reach out to your healthcare professional, an occupational therapist or physiotherapist uh, to for, ask them how to show you how to get up properly from a fall. Alan, is there anything you'd like to add to this? Uh, no, I, th I think if, if uh, I, I, I thank you for your, your comments there, Catherine, that was great. Uh, getting lifeline is easy. As I said before, there's a, a specific seniors NL uh, lifeline number. Um, is that anywhere on there, Catherine? Seniors NL. No, that's the generic number. But yeah, as Catherine mentioned, there is there are uh, there there is our website uh, to contact us as as well as the generic one eight hundred lifeline number and the specific seniors NL lifeline number. Coupon questions. Okay. Um, so um, I'd like to just elaborate on on a few points that uh, Alan Alan spoke about. Can everybody hear me? Okay. Uh, Catherine. Yes. We're getting some people saying that you're a little bit muffled. Um, so if you want to go to your audio setting. Uh, and then click on the mic on the side and see if it is just. Um, it will not allow me to change it. Hold on now. Okay. She sounds, she sounds fine. Okay, then. I've, I've, uh, that's okay. It, yeah, it, it's actually starting to increase. However, it seems like there's a lag on my side. Okay, no problem. Sorry about that. I'll actually speak louder. Does that is that better? I can hear you fine. Yeah. Okay. So my apologies, everybody, about the low volume. I was not aware of that. Um. I just want to elaborate on a few things that we that that Alan mentioned, and I mean, I want to go back to the six. I want to go back to the six reasons that cause falls. 
and just talk about mobility. Uh, the key with mobility is, and I mean, I know we hear it so often, it is to remain active. Um, you know, the more we remain active, we keep our joints moving all the time. It's, we're, we're, we're lubricating those joints. We're getting those joints moving. And of course, that will actually reduce any type of, um, you know, yeah. reduce the risk of falls. I mean, it's been used. When we say be active, it's not that you have to run a marathon. It's just get up and move the way that you need to move, not the way that your next door neighbor moves or your your close friend of yours, a colleague of yours. It what it's what works for you. Whether it be doing yoga, chair exercises, even when we get up, you know, and and do our housework, our gardening, we are moving. It's like anything. If you have a car that you have parked on the on the grass for a, for a long time and you don't move, it what happens when you try to start it? It seizes up. Our bodies act the same way. Um, we're talking about balancing and uh, balance problems themselves and, and the, the sensory deficits. That is referring to your 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 feet, your ears, uh, your hearing, and your sight. It's all of those. If you are having any difficulties, say with your eyes, and you notice that there's something going on there, um, I'm going to use myself as as an example that. A while ago, I was driving and I noticed that the, the traffic lights were blurry. So, of course, diabetes runs in my family. It's, it's generic. So, of course, the first thing I wanted to do is say, okay, you know what? I need to go to my physician and get that checked. So, I went and got my blood work checked and things of that nature, and that was fine. So, then the second thing was I need to get my eyes checked. Is there something going on with my glasses? Um, you know, uh, do I have is something going on there? Do I have a cataract, maybe? So um, it was dry eye. At the end of the day, it was just simply dry eye. So eye drops cleared that up, but I wouldn't have known that until I started to do all the tests to make sure. Uh, if you're having problems with your hearing, please, by all means, go and get yourself checked out. Um, and if you have difficulty, if you're having no feeling in your feet, and you're experiencing the neuropathy where you have no sensation. Please, once again, it's very important. I know we keep saying it over and over and over because, you know, if you get these things checked out as you see them and address those issues, it may not lead into anything that worsens. And I mean, the key is to, to remain healthy and not to fall. One fall is too many. And there's all these things that we can do to try to prevent them. But as Alan said, we can't stop and prevent all falls. One of the questions that we had during registration was, what would be the unknown reason for a fall? The example of this person when they registered was a person, uh, example is a person falls when stooping to pick up something. There's no diagnosis found and yet continues to fall and, occasion and occasionally it's, it's unexpected falls. So it's, it's somebody is bending over to, and, and me, I am not a physician um, and I don't pretend to be one on TV. Um, but I mean, the, the, the thing of it is, if you are experiencing any type of dizziness of moving, it could be the adjustment of, of your blood pressure. There's devices to help you pick up things, those grabbers. So as Alan mentioned that your home health store uh, does have different devices like that, where if you are experiencing, you know, dizziness when you're bending over, there's just get those grabbers. They can be used to pick up things off the floor. You can use them for taking laundry out of your tub, which somebody recently said to me and I said, I didn't even think of that. So there's always ways that we can improve. Um, and to ask your question for that person, why would that be happening? Again, not a physician, really can't answer that. You know, the person that you're referring to um, just really needs to keep going back to the physician saying, I'm still having these, these episodes where I'm falling and I'm bending over. I would echo those comments, uh, Catherine. I, I went down an internet rabbit hole uh, with that question and I, I did come up with uh, BPPV, benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. Um, so, you know, that's, that's just, uh, head movement and, uh, your inner ear crystals shift, uh, to another section of the inner ear and, and it's, it's the most common cause of, of vertigo and, and, and 
seniors over 65 and there's there's not a I don't think there's a whole lot of things you can you can do about it one one common cause is, is dehydration make sure you're you're you're, you're hydrated and uh, again if you're not hydrated enough that that can also affect your your blood pressure so drink plenty of water people Water is key. Is if you know, keep keep the fluids going. Again, think of our bodies as an engine. Water is the oil that keeps it running. Um, anybody have any questions, Barbara? Are there any questions in the chat? Anybody want to make any comments? Um, I'll make a comment. Um, I teach a lot of seniors um, every week like four classes a week and probably 60 to 80 seniors in chair yoga and gentle yoga. And uh, there's a, a lot of tips you can uh, give seniors. One is just to, uh, when they're out walking or even in the house, just being aware of where they're stepping, being aware of your uh, surroundings and just be mindful of where you're placing your feet. And, um, Another thing I think um, Alan mentioned was the mobility and uh, the range of motion. So any kind of stretches you can do, uh, like just reaching the arm out and you reach your body with it and just bring the arm across and then bring it, bring it back. Um, so many things like that help you in your range of motion. Balance, you can stand up at your sink when you're doing the dishes and just lift one foot off the floor and then just probably stop for a minute and take one hand off your sink and then maybe the other. You have it right there. And with your chair, you can use the chair as a prop and walk back from the prop, uh, from the chair and stretch out your back, lengthen your back, lengthen your hamstrings and lots of things like that. Um, uh, yeah, the range of motion is really good to work on. I've had people say it helps them with their gardening. It helps them with their housework. And, you know, it helps them to be more safe in and out of the house. Thank you so much for those tips. And can I ask what area just, I'm not, I don't, this call is recorded. I don't, I'm not going to say your name or anything. What area are you in? I'm in Deer Lake. I'm, uh, I live in Deer Lake, uh, sure. but I, I teach in, in mm -hmm. several areas here um, in Pasadena, weekly classes in Reedville, and uh, I go around and do presentations, things like that. And uh, I, I tuned in this morning because actually later in February, I was going to offer a workshop on fall prevention to my classes. And I was hoping to get some, you know, more information to, to give to them and, um, yeah, because I think it is so important. It's really so important because we know as we age that if we fall, you know, the consequences are usually a lot worse than if we're young and healthy. Definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. I'll actually send you an email after the call. Okay, so, great. So we can connect because I'd love to speak with you a little bit more and uh, make you aware of, of the other supportive materials that I can certainly provide to you for your events. That's great, Catherine. Thank you. You are very welcome. Anybody else have any comments that they'd like to ask, questions, share a fall that you've had? Oh, we have a very quiet line here. I do believe uh, there's some comments, Catherine, in the uh, chat if Barb wants to uh, look at the chat. Barb, do we have any comments or questions in the chat? And you do have yourself on mute as well, Barb. There we I'm go. I'm just checking. I was, it don't come up on screen. I'd search for it. Uh, first one, will the slides be shared with registrants? I'll discuss that with Alan afterwards to find out if we could actually share the PowerPoint. Some of the PowerPoints that we do share, uh, we cannot send the slides over, but we always have this. This is recorded and will be available on our YouTube channel. Uh, and again, everybody that uh, registered for the call today will receive the link to the YouTube video. Excellent. Uh, how much is the service, this service? Uh, for the basic home safe standard, it's uh, $43.95 a month plus taxes. 
Um, if you want a home safe with fall detection, uh, it, it'd be $58.95 a month plus uh, taxes. Um, but I, I would encourage you to, um, if cost is, is a stumbling block or a concern, I, I would encourage you to reach out uh, via the 1-800 number um, and, and, and speak with the direct salespeople. Because uh, as I said before, they, they will talk to you and discuss your situation and, and they will try to work something out, out with you. There are, for example, with the personal help buttons, uh, there are subsidies available. So uh, please discuss it with, with them if, if you get the opportunity. That's it for questions, but you, uh, Yamanda Cotty said, good tip, watch where you are going. And that's, that's all there. With regards to the cost question, I'd, I'd like to add a little bit onto that. If um, anybody is with the um, community supports program, my mom and blank that time, sorry. With the community supports program and you're, you have, say for example, you're paying a, a uh, client contribution over to Eastern Health, say if you're getting home supports, and uh, when you do your financial for that, you are actually asked about different bills that you're paying and they're considered to be allowable expenses, such as if you're paying for your pre-arranged funeral, that's taken into consideration. Having a personal health button is also taken into consideration where it, um, if you're you know, paying out the monthly charge for a, a device that will be taken into consideration for your uh, client contribution. So it could actually decrease your client contribution to help you have the service. Um, and if you are with the community support program itself, it's always that nice to ask them and follow up with the nurse or social worker or the health the OTPT, the healthcare professional that you're working with to find out if there's any programs that they have that cover devices that supports safe independent living. So it's always nice to follow up with your healthcare prov providers, healthcare professionals, in the community supports program should you be fall, should you fall underneath that program. One of the other questions that we had asked when we're talking about price is will the prescription drug program cover any portion of med ready? Uh, unfortunately, no, uh, not at this time. However, again, I can't stress the importance to follow up with uh, your healthcare professional within the community supports program with community services to ask them if there's anything that could help you um, have a device. You don't know until you ask. Alan, is there anything that you would like to add? Uh, I would like to just shout out the the, the seniors and LL uh, uh, seniors Newfoundland uh, lifeline number if I could. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I don't know if you folks have a, a pen. Well, if, if it's being recorded, you'll you'll hear it on the YouTube uh, channel. It's one. 888-220-7323. And that's the Seniors NL uh, lifeline number, specifically for Seniors NL. That number again was 1-888-220-7323. Um, I don't know, Barb, if you could put that in the chat, I can certainly read that back out to you again. And you can put that in there if you like. Um, one of the other questions that we had during registration was how does one get rid of the scary feelings that he or she might fall? My, my only comment is if you did have a, a lifeline, probably with uh, the fall detection, that extra added, extra added layer of protection. Hopefully that that will alleviate uh, uh, some concern of, of falling. It'll certainly uh, um, give peace of mind to your loved ones if 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 you had a, 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 a lifeline with with fall detection added onto it. I'd like to add on to what Alan said as well. Um, speak up. Talk to your family members. Talk to your friends, your colleague, your. Uh, your 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 healthcare provider, make them aware that you're you're you know afraid of falling, afraid of you know being alone and if something happens you, you don't have anybody to reach out to or you don't know how to get the help you need when you need it. 
Um, speak about it. There's there's devices that are out there. There's things that you can do to build your confidence. You know, such as I'm going to go back to to one of the six factors that cause falls: home hazards. There could be something that that's a home hazard that you may not be aware of it's a home hazard until you actually have a good look at it and say, you know what, that cord is sticking out on the corner and I didn't really notice it before. My foot could, you know, uh, get caught in that and cause me to fall. Or you're getting up frequently in the nighttime and, and going to the bathroom, but it's not well lit. One of the main one of the main concerns about falls in the nighttime is that people are getting up in the dark and running to the washroom and, you know, going back again, half asleep, one eye open, one eye closed. And then all of a sudden you, you, you bang into something, even though it's there all the time. But when you're half asleep, you know, we're not really paying attention to much of anything. So again, let's make things well lit. So I mean, there, speak up and say that you're afraid of falling and be open about it and, and make the changes, work with somebody to make those changes to build your confidence. It's all about building the confidence back up. Because I mentioned before, one fall is too many. Anybody would like to add anything? Any questions, comments, concerns? She's would you like to share a fall that you've had? She's making notes and put some on the screen, so she's working. My bathroom, can you put the slide up with the telephone number for people to copy it down? Uh, what number was that? Blank one's the number. Okay, that number, Barb, you want to type it in the chat? It's a picture. Yeah, you can do that. You can also put it on the picture. It is, I will have it in the email as well when I send it back to everybody. Yeah, but you can also put it on the picture just for the recording. Because no one on the recording will see it on the chat. So you can go to the when you were introducing him. I'll get rid of all this now. Here we go. Look. There it is. There's just another comment uh, from you, Munda. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I'm sorry. But she just want to let everybody know a nice light, I guess, a sleep. A night, a night light sleep, I guess, helps a lot. Yes, there, there are different lights that you can Oh, get a night light. A night light helps a lot. <laughs> I read that wrong. A night light. Yeah, I always have one, too. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And and one thing that I, I like to say, you know, uh, anytime that I'm doing any type of fall presentation is um, what's the one thing that all falls have in common? Let's just think about that for a minute. What's the one thing that all falls have in common? And not all falls will call injury, cause injury. Yes, some of them can. Falls don't discriminate against age. It has nothing whatsoever to do with your age to have a fall. So that is a, you know, misconception is, is there's no discrimination. Anybody can have a fall at any age. Are there any other questions, comments? Anything else in the chat? Another, okay. another comment was just gravity. True. Not quite sure. Does anybody, whoever wrote that, do you want to come up off mute and just explain what you mean by that, please? If you're comfortable, if you're not comfortable, that's quite all right. Hi, I wrote that. I don't, yeah. I don't even know if I'm on because I can't see anything. I'm just looking at something, but. My name is Moira and I live on the Northern Peninsula and I have a condition called Ehlers-Danlos. And so basically, if I was to take one word to describe Ehlers-Danlos, um, it would be gravity and it would be defying gravity. So I fall a lot. I fall probably 30 times a day. Mm -hmm. um, I'm living in a like just deplorable um, residence of my own, trying to get that part of it sorted. But um we have zones in our bodies for movement and people who are hypermobile like myself 
we move from the third zone. And that means that we're actually pulling ourselves to move as opposed to pushing ourselves to move. And it's a really interesting thing, but it puts a whole different perspective on falls. And so I tuned in just to kind of hear what I could see. And um, unfortunately, I'm in the Northern Peninsula and I don't have the support systems that would allow me to effectively use Lifeline. Otherwise, I'd be signing up right here and now. But um, anyways, yeah. So when the question was asked, to me, it's just gravity. <laughs> I'm yeah. defying gravity every day. Mm -hmm. I get up and I live. <clears throat> wow. And yeah. how long have how long have you been how long have you been living with this? Well, Ehlers Danlos is a genetic condition, so I was actually born with it. Um, I didn't have stability or tone as a child. They said I would never walk. I walked on my hands until I was about seven years old, almost wholly. And um that uh, was turned around by the teachers in school when they said, oh, we can see that she can, uh, we can see that she can uh, actually stand up and walk. So she's going to have to start doing that. And um, at the same time, I had a couple of other tests done and I found out that I was missing connective tissues and that kind of put me into that realm. So they said I would never talk either as a result of it because I don't have frenulums in my mouth. And clearly I've defied that. I'm 63, um, but walking is really difficult. I do spend um, almost all of my waking hours flat, and I would need to be, <laughs> I cry when I think about it, when I do start to move and stand up and defy gravity and become vertical, and I try to live that vertical life in a horizontal world, I need to do it with movement. So it's just like Forrest Gump. When you can, you can, and you run. And when I can, I can, and I must keep moving because as soon as I stop, I don't have the ability to use my muscular structure, which is like intense, to stabilize my skeletal structure and to defy the gravity of the blood in my body that is displacing as I'm not standing up slowly. It's a very, very uh, difficult condition to manage on top of that i have a annoying comorbidity of it called raynaud's so i lose my my blood circulation to my feet they freeze and it's impossible to walk on frozen feet you just can't do it crazy anyways <laughs> i was gonna be i was gonna be silent but i've really appreciated this and it is really nice to see that these opportunities for increased safety is available for people it's good well, I'm, I'm i'm really glad that you came up and, and explained that because whether you, you know this or not you are very inspiring so thank you so much for sharing that and, and your story okay, um, thank you one thing that you mentioned that is is having the supports to have say different services in place to help you um, I would, I would recommend that you actually just call and have that conversation because you're talking about different supports. I know with the personal health button itself, there's responders that you list in case you have an emergency to that you need help. Uh, obviously, having three individuals would be ideal, uh, but even if there was one individual, say, for example, if you happen to have that fall and you couldn't get get up, at least you would be able to, you know, make somebody aware that I need help. I mean, sometimes a home support worker, if you have someone coming in, they will actually say, yes, you know what, put me down. Uh, I know there's been other individuals that, um, again, in a similar situation where they don't have anybody available, that sometimes there's members of um, volunteer fire department that would step up and say, you know what, yes, put me down as, as a responder. So, I mean, they're, they, I would look into that a little bit further because that might give you another little bit of peace of mind knowing that you, you actually may have the support, supports there. Just to give you some thought. Something to Thank think you. about. Thank you. Anybody else have a story that they'd like to share? Comment, concern? Yeah. Uh, do these gadgets come with the fee? I'm oh sorry. yes, that they would. Yeah, it's it's not extra. It's it's yeah. 
I'm sorry, but I actually didn't understand that question myself. It was that question like, is there any hidden fees? I think I think they mean the personal help, the buttons that are on the screen. I believe, unless I'm mistaken. So um yeah, yeah that's a that's a service. So they do it is it is actually a fee associated with it. Um the prices that Alan mentioned earlier, there's no hidden fees. So what he said with that is that that would be the monthly charge. However, the is there a um a activation fee, Alan? Uh yeah, they'd be an installation fee. Yes. Uh, it could be um uh, Tell either telephone uh, uh, assisted or they, we do have uh, we call them HSRs home service representatives that will go in and actually <laughs> in, install the the unit uh, uh, in your home. Um, the telephone service installation fee is thirty nine ninety five plus tax, and the uh, home service representative uh, fee is eighty nine ninety five plus tax. And where are the home service representatives located to in Newfoundland Labrador? I would have to uh, I would have to get back to you on that, Catherine, because I, I know they're kind of spread all over the place. Um, but I know there are some in uh, I know there are some in St. John's. But as as far as rural Newfoundland, I would I would have to look into that. And that would be um, a follow up that we could send this out to everybody when I, I send the information just so people will know if there's a home service representative available, say in your in in or around your your area. Anybody else have any other questions? Comments? Okay. So um, just a reminder that on uh, January the 31st, our Let's Talk About session is going to be about Succeed, uh, hydroponic growing, very, very interesting topic. And then on Wednesday, February the 7th, we're going to talk, uh, talk with Service Canada. Um, so one of the things that Service Canada will be talking about will be the new dental care program. I uh, have been in conversation, so it will be an opportunity for you to ask some questions about that, uh, get some other clarification. And the Service Canada presentation will not be recorded. This is a live presentation only. If you are interested in attending, please do so. And please spread the word that Service Canada presentation is live uh, only and a great opportunity to ask your questions. There's a comment there from you, Mona Cody. Thank you, Catherine, for organizing this session. Alan for the presentation and participants for their contribution. A lot of information. Thank you so much, Yamona. Thanks so much. Uh, we're at our last slide here, everybody. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, if there's anything at all that we could help with, there's Seniors NL contact information on the screen. 1-800 number that you see there is for Newfoundland and Labrador only. Um, of course, you can always send us an email. Our website address is there, and you can always follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We are here to help you. There's no question too uh, big or too small, so please don't hesitate to reach out to us for anything. And before we end today's session, are there any other questions, comments, or concerns? Okay. Uh, like Catherine, to Catherine yes. I was just going to ask you if if uh, if I call that seniors 1-800 number, uh, can I reach you? I would like to talk to you a little more about uh, some, um, you know, extra information you could give to me about fall uh, protection for seniors. Uh, that number on the screen itself is our main number to our uh, our desk, our information desk. Um, yeah. I will connect with you afterwards, actually. I'm going to send you an email directly. Okay, I great. Do, I do have your email through the registration, if that uses Christ correct email address you used? Yes. And shortly yes. after this presentation, I will be reaching out to you directly. And then you'll have my contact information um, at your fingertips. Okay. But great. if anybody Thanks. ever wants to get a hold of me and reach out to me, um, you know, the 737-2333 number, you can certainly call that and ask to speak with myself. And of course, everybody on this call, more than likely you're on my email distribution list, you receive my emails. So my, my email is outreach at 
seniorsnl.ca. Catherine? Yes. Rosanna uh, said, I will be away for the Service Canada presentation. If someone from Seniors NL can take notes for me, please. Is that that be recorded? Uh, she can pick that up from an email you send her on that or? No, nope, Service Canada is live only. Oh, okay. It's a live presentation only. Uh, I'm going to ask Rosanna if she could actually reach out to myself and uh, through email or give the service center a call and ask the questions that you have. I might be able to get those those questions answered for you and provide you the information that you need. Okay. Any other questions, comments, concerns? No? Okay. I would like to thank Alan for taking the time today to speak to us. Greatly Thanks for having me. Learned a lot, and I would like to thank all our participants who joined. And I um, hope to see you on January the 31st at our next Let's Talk About. Have a great day, everybody. Bye. Take care. Bye.